Rub up your engines! C.T. Greaves says, I'm wondering about those modern technologies to get better gas mileage. The engines that turn cylinders off. Cars that shut off when you come to a stop and then start up when you take off again. Very good question. And basically, I think kind of half-assed ways to make a gasoline internal combustion engine get better gas mileage. Stuff that most people really don't like once they try it. Talk about the cylinder deactivation. It's been around a long time. GM used to try it a long time ago and then they brought it back. The real kicker with those cylinder deactivation is, and the engineers haven't really figured out why yet, they generally all end up burning oil as they age. Something about when it deactivates some cylinders and not the others, it changes the lubrication system. Piston rings wear out. It just doesn't work right. And when it comes to those shut the car off when you come to a stop, when you shut your car off, the most wear you ever get in the car is when you start the car up. So if you keep shutting it off and starting it up, shutting it off and starting it up, it's going to wear the engine out faster. Now they claim in those engines that they put better bearings in so the bearings don't wear out and better oil pumps and stuff like that, but I still say that's a bunch of nonsense. The things are going to wear out faster over time. I have seen that in some of my customers' cars that had the early systems. Now these vehicles are burning oil when they shouldn't, so I think a lot of that stuff, uh, I'd stay away from it. It doesn't work all that well and it can create problems down the line. BBR, hey Scotty, quick question, which is more reliable? A Mustang EcoBoost or the V6? Well, the V6 is more reliable. GDI pressure of fuel injectors that are spraying directly into the cylinders. That's a disaster for higher wear. As an example, take some of the Hondas, the CRVs that have their version of the EcoBoost. They don't call it EcoBoost, they call it Earth Friendly or some crazy thing. But it's the same thing. It's got a turbo and GDI, and those have oil dilution problems. It gets gasoline diluted in it, of course, that's going to wear your bearings and your engine and stuff. And Honda's trying to kind of slide their way in recalling some of them, but they really should recall a lot of them. They got some serious problems with them. And any system like that generally is going to have problems, especially as they age when the warranty isn't the fact anymore is when you're going to notice it and then they're not going to do anything about it. Violin Rammer, that's a good name, so that's, Scotty, I'm looking at a one owner 2003 Buick Century with 27,000 miles. Is that a reliable vehicle? Well, it can be. Uh, it is 17 years old, realize that. But if they can prove that it really has 27,000 miles and you can get it at a good price, my philosophy with cars is if you can get a low mileage car for a cheaper price, that's a reasonably reliable car, not the greatest in the world, but not a horrible car, especially if it's got that uh, V6 engine that's pretty good. Go ahead and buy it cheap enough. You never know. You get a good knock around car for a cheap price, it's old, but it could have a lot of mileage on it. I've had customers do that and be perfectly happy, but you want to prove that's the real mileage. Because if it isn't, it's not worth hardly anything. You know, if it's really got 127,000 or something else, you need proof from receipts and all kinds of stuff. Not just somebody's word and what the odometer says, they can be sent back. You could replace them with a used one from a junkyard and stick it in. You want to make sure that's the real mileage. Ashley 80 says, Scotty, is a Tacoma with an automatic transmission a good buy? Yes, they're well-made vehicles. One of my sons, bought one with an automatic transmission, four-cylinder engine, he loves a truck. What you have to decide on when you get a truck, how are you going to drive it? Are you going to pull a lot of weight, tow a lot of stuff? One, get a standard transmission because it's going to tow better. That's just the way that it goes and lasts longer. It's going to tow a whole bunch of weight and heavy stuff. I'd go past the Tacoma. I'd get like a F-150 or maybe a diesel Ford because towing requires special things. Now, if you're just using the Tacoma as a normal run around truck, great. You can get an automatic transmission and a four-cylinder engine. They're fine. I wouldn't buy the six-cylinder because they cost so much more. You're going to spend many thousands extra for the six-cylinder because they come with all the added bonus stuff that come with it. So you're going to pay a whole bunch more money. But as a standard Great little runaround truck that Tacoma with the four cylinder automatic is, is a good truck. Next question is Lindsay. So, Scotty, I have a Honda Accord 2003 V6 3 liter. I have misfire in all of the cylinders and I tried spark plugs and different things. It didn't fix it. What do you think it could be? They can be lots of things. They can be the ignition system isn't firing right. It can be the fuel system isn't sending the right amount of fuel, which will make it misfire. It can be bad valves in the engine that are leaking pressure so it won't fire correctly. It can be a blowing head gasket. Now, of course, try the simple things, spark plugs, things like that first. But on those, 
it's often a blowing head gasket when they're as old as that on those V6 engines. It's a 17-year-old engine. So I have a video, how to tell if your head gasket's blown. Watch that, get the little test kit. You can get it for 30 bucks from Amazon and test it. And if it is blowing, then you kind of think about, should I get rid of the car? Because to do a head gasket on that V6 engine is a lot of money. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.